Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on relations. And as we start off with some key concepts, we're going to say that a coordinate system is formed by the intersection of two number lines, the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. Now the vertical axis, this one right here, is also called the Y axis. Now the horizontal axis, this one, is called the X axis. And continuing on, this point here in the middle at 0, 0, is the point where the axes intersect. That is called the origin. Now, the plane containing the x and y axes is called the coordinate plane. And lastly, each point, such as this one, 2, 3, is named by an ordered pair. So a point is represented on a graph using ordered pairs. So an ordered pair is a set of numbers or coordinates written in the form parentheses x, comma, y. Close your parentheses. The x value called the x coordinate represents the horizontal placement of the point. The y value or y coordinate represents the vertical placement of the point. Next. A set of ordered pairs is called a relation. A relation can be represented in several different ways. As an equation, in a graph, with a table, or with a mapping. A mapping illustrates how each element of the domain, our x values, is paired with an element in the range, our y values. The set of the first numbers of the ordered pairs is the domain. So our x's are our domain. The set of second numbers of the ordered pairs is the range of the relation. And so our y values are the range. Now this mapping represents the ordered pairs, negative 2, 4, which you can see negative 2, 4, negative 1, 4, 0, 6, 1, 8, and 2, 8. So we can study the different representations of the same relation below. We have the ordered pairs 1, 2, negative 2, 4, 0, negative 3. And these can fit into a table, 1, 2, negative 2, 4, 0, negative 3. They can fit into a graph. You can see the 1, 2, the negative 2, 4, 0, negative 3. And into a mapping with the domain and the range. The domain being the first set of values, our x values. So the 1 matches the 2, the negative 2 with the 4, and the 0 with the negative 3. The x values of a relation are members of the domain and the y values of a relation are members of the range. In the relation above, the domain is in our braces, negative 2, comma 1, comma 0, and the range is negative 3, 2, and 4. We're going to be asked here in example 1a to express 4, 3, negative 2, negative 1, 2, negative 4, and 0, negative 4 as a table, a graph, and a mapping. And actually I'm going to throw in a bonus way here as the ordered pairs. So we can actually write the ordered pairs out as 
4, 3, negative 2, negative 1, 2, negative 4, and 0, negative 4. Now how these go into the table, let's just take these into the table. 4, 3 for our xy, negative 2, negative 1, 2, negative 4, and 0, negative 4. When we pull these out into the graph now, 4, 3, as a refresher, make sure we go over the x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up, 1, 2, 3. Next, we have negative 2, negative 1, where we're going to go, starting with the origin, back negative 2 on the x, down to negative 1. Then, 2, negative 4, over to 2, down to negative 4. And then we have 0, negative 4, so we're not going anywhere on the x and y axis, but just down to negative 4. And that's the graph. Now for the mapping, this will actually help us to determine the domain and range as well. But for the mapping, let's list out the domain and the range. And we'll have these kind of rounded rectangles here. And for the domain, we'll put in the x values that we have. So we have 4, negative 2, 2, and 0. Now our 4 goes to 3. And then we'll draw an arrow to connect that. Our negative 2 goes with negative 1 and we'll draw an arrow to connect that. Our 2 goes to negative 4, and we'll draw an arrow to connect that. Now the 0 also goes to negative 4, and so we're not going to relist negative 4, we'll just draw another arrow going to the negative 4. And so the mapping can then really help us to determine the domain and range in part b. Now, the way we're going to list this out is to say our domain is going to equal, in these little braces things, list those domain values in order from least to greatest. So negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Your range, or r, is going to equal, again, in order from least to greatest negative 4, negative 1, and positive 3. So we can express a relation as ordered pairs, as a table, a graph, a mapping, and then we can determine the domain and range. In a relation, the value of the variable that determines the output is called the independent variable. The variable with the value that is dependent on the value of the independent variable is called the dependent variable. So the dependent variable depends on the independent variable. The domain contains values of the independent variable. So another way of saying that is our independent variables are going to be our x's. The range contains the values of the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is going to also be our y's. So identify the independent and dependent variables for each relation. In example 2a, in warm climates, the average amount of electricity used rises as the daily average temperature increases and falls as the daily average temperature decreases. And so we're going to have an independent variable and we're going to have a dependent variable.
which value, which variable depends on the other. Well, the average amount of electricity used rises as the daily average temperature increases and falls as the daily te average temperature decreases. So I would say the one that's depending on the other, the amount of electricity being used is depending on the daily average temperature. So the dependent variable is going to be the amount of electricity used because that depended on the independent variable which was the daily average temperature. And another way to think about this, when the temperature increased, the electricity increased. When the temperature decreased, the electricity decreased. So the electricity depended on the temperature. Question 2b. The number of calories you burn increases as the number of minutes that you walk increases. So again, we're going to have an independent variable. And we're going to have a dependent variable. which depends on the other. Well, I think the calories you burn depends on the minutes you walk. So the dependent variable is going to be number of calories burned because that depended on the number of minutes that you walked. So the calories burned depended on the number of minutes walked, or in other words, the time. In our last example of the lesson, we'll learn how to analyze and interpret graphs. The graph represents the temperature in Miss Ling's classroom on a winter day. Describe what happens in the graph. Well, just looking at this, we have time on the x, temperature on the y. Now our time is going to be our, just so you know, our independent variable. And the temperature is going to be our dependent variable. As the dependent variable is usually graphed on the y and the independent variable is usually graphed on the x. Just something that's good to know. Now as we actually look here, as we start the day, the temperature is increasing, and then it goes down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down to the end. So what's really going on here? Well, when the day starts, the temperature increases. So we could write that the temperature increases after the heat is turned on. And then in the, during the day, we actually kind of have this up and down thing going on, so we have some fluctuation. So we can say something along the lines of the temperature fluctuates, it's a nice vocabulary word for going up and down, but we can say fluctuates up and down, because I guess you can fluctuate side to side too, because of, we'll just make up an excuse like the thermostat. So we've covered the increase. We've covered the fluctuations up and down. 
And now we need to cover the decrease. Well, we could say finally, the temperature drops when the heat is turned off. Makes sense. Start of the day, the heat's turned on and the temperature increases. Then it fluctuates throughout the day because of the thermostat. You know, it hits a temperature where, where it gets cooler, then the heat kicks on, then it kind of cools off, and the heat kicks back on, and kind of cools off, the heat kicks back on, kind of cools off, heat kicks back on, and then it drops at the end of the day. That is it for this lesson on relations. Good luck.